Hi dear students Santosh here and today I am going to deliver my next lecture that is part 2 of conveyance of water this lecture deals with water hammer as well as corrosion in the pipes and different types of pipe apprentices and especially valves so this lecture is very important as far as water supply engineering or water supply distribution is concerned so please listen my lecture till the end to get ideas cleared about civil engineering or water supply engineering and thank you for those subscribers who have subscribed my channel and one once again request to all others to subscribe my channel to get the ideas cleared in civil engineering so let us start my lecture on conveyance of water part 2 first of all we are going to discuss the water hammer it is very famous question in competitive type of examination and all the time it is asked what is the water hammer water hammer ko marathi mein ya hindi mein describe kiya jaye to kaise describe kiya jata hai jab hum toilet mein jate hai aur udhar ka wall pani ke liye chhod dete hai और वाटर क्लोसेट्स का वॉल बंद कर देते हैं तो वो वॉल बंद करने के बाद पाइप में से एक आवाज़ आती है और वो आवाज़ इज़ नथिंग बट द वाटर हैमर वाटर हैमर इफेक्ट इज़ प्रोड्यूस्ड व्हेन द वेलोसिटी ऑफ वाटर इन द पाइप इज चेकड सडनली बाय सडन क्लोजर ऑफ द वॉल व्हेन यू आर गोइंग टू क्लोज दैट वॉल देन द वेलासिटी ऑफ वाटर इज चेकड इन दैट पाइप एंड प्रेशर इज डेवलप्ड and dash pressure creates the noise and that noise is nothing but the water hammer when the wall is closed there will be sudden rise in pressure due to moment of moving water is being destroyed we destroyed the velocity or moment of move, moving water so that the pressure is increased and moment of water is destroyed the rise in the pressure in some cases may be so large that pipe may even burst in some cases the pipe may be lead to burst it is therefore essential to take into account this pressure rise in the design of the pipes the maximum water pressure or maximum water hammer pressure is calculated by formula that is ph max is equal to w by g you know the, the w that is specific weight of water g is acceleration due to gravity and up and v0 where up is the velocity of pressure wave generated that is velocity of pressure wave and v0 is equal to normal velocity of flow of water or fluid in the pipeline that measured in meter per second also up is also measured in meter per second what is the unit of w w unit is newton per meter cube what is g's unit that is meter per second so you must know all the units for calculations then second point in that conveyance of water part 2 is the corrosion in the pipes this is very common phenomenon and when a metal is immersed in the water or in an electrolyte goes into solution the action is known as a corrosion <laughs> the pipe corrosion may be internal due to flowing water or may be external due to surrounding media like soil and other and may lead to disintegration of the metal आपको हिंदी में बताते तो करोजन क्या होता है पाइप के अंदर या पाइप के बाहर एक लेयर ब्राउनिश लेयर जमा होता है वो हम रिन्फोर्समेंट में भी हमेशा देखते हैं और ये लेयर इज नथिंग बट द करोजन इन द पाइप दैट इज वेरी सिंपल आयन आयंस टेन टू गोज इन टू वाटर एंड रिप्लेस द हाइड्रोजन आयन द आयन एक्टिंग एज एन एनोड एंड द हाइड्रोजन फॉर्मिंग at the cathodic points means iron takes the role of anode and hydrogen takes the part of cathode the factors that contribute to pipe corrosion are the ph value of flowing water you know that ph value presence of water in the surrounding soil and its ph also very important composition of pipe material and temperature as well as oxygen and soil bacteria 
these are the factors which contribute to pipe corrosion so we have to minimize that corrosion in the water supply lines the corrosion may result in tuberculation with accompanying reduction in carrying capacity of water means <coughs> discharge capacity of that pipeline leaks the pipe also and disintegrate the pipe also so corrosion is dangerous so what are the different methods to prevent that pipe corrosion first is a very famous method that is cathodic protection it has been observed that if pipeline is act, act as a cathode then corrosion of the pipe is minimized so we have to do first thing we have to make that pipeline as a cathode instead of hydrogen cathodic protection is acknowledged by connecting the metal in electric circuit to the negative pole of dc generator we have to connect that pipe to negative pole of dc generator and the positive pole being anode buried into the ground so it is so simple <coughs> figure shows electrical circuit please look at this figure in this figure this pipe this pipeline this is the pipeline which is acting as a cathode and this is the dc source or dc generator this is the negative pole and this is the positive pole for positive poles anodes are connected and for negative pole cathode or pipeline acting as a cathode is connected so it is going to minimize the corrosion so you must know this figure and you must study this figure this figure shows the electrical circuit due to such a cathodic protection electrical potential of pipe metal will be lower below that that of surrounding and current will flow from surroundings to the pipe okay in this process anodes are buried into the ground and gets corroded and have to be replaced at regular intervals and voltage may be voltage may be vary between 1 to 5, 1 to 30 volts cathodic protection retards the galvanic and electrolytic corrosion hydro generation and to extend bacterial corrosion of the metal so it is very important process to remove the corrosion which is termed as a cathodic protection you must know that the cathode is the pipeline and anodes are buried into the ground and current is flowing from surrounding to the pipe then second is the proper selection of pipe material it has been found that homogeneity of pipe metal tends to minimize the corrosion if the material is homogeneous you do you you know all the people what is homogeneous and what is isotropic having same properties is homogeneous and having same properties in all direction is the isotropic impurities of lower potential tend to create galvanic couples resulting into corrosion alloys of ions or steel with chromium copper and nickel are more resistant to the corrosion than iron and steel alone so iron is coated with the chromium copper or nickel evaldur metal is a lightweight corrosion resistant alloy consisting of copper and silicon with the outer metals that evaldur is also used then protective linings and coatings if the pipes are made up of non corrosive materials they either become very costly or they do not possess the required strength that is important however the corrosion in the metal pipes can be reduced by providing protective anti corrosive lining to that pipes this lining will prevent the corrosion and also contamination of water and will also make the inside surface of the pipe smooth so frictionless and velocity will be the more the common material used for lining are tar or asphaltic materials enamels resins then zinc coating or galvanizing metallizing plastics and paints coal tar enamel coating are extensively used for steel pipes cast iron pipes are coated with the angus smith coating most coated steel pipe is also wrapped frequently with asbestos and asbestos felt saturated with bitumen asphaltic coating are less permeable to oxidizing agents than to water then treatment of water is also one of the process to prevent the corrosion 
Pipe corrosion can be minimized by proper treatment of water. The methods usually employed are the pH adjustment, control of calcium carbonate, removal of the dissolved oxygen that is DO, removal of carbon dioxide and addition of sodium silicate etc. So, you must know this processes of treatment to the water to avoid the corrosion of pipes. Then we are going to discuss the pipe apprentices and especially the walls and they are all the time asked in examination. The following apprentices are used in water distribution system. First is the sluice wall or gate wall, second is the air wall, third is the reflux wall, fourth is the relief wall, fifth is the attitude wall and sixth is the score wall. So, how we are going to remember this, you know SAR and what is opposite to SAR is the RAS. So, S is the sluice wall, A is the air wall, R is the reflux wall, R is the relief wall, A is the attitude wall and S is the score wall. So, remember in this line, so you will get all the walls <coughs> to be described in your descriptive type of paper. So, please look, out the, look at this figure. This figure shows the dam here, reservoir is here and distribution reservoir is located below somewhat here. So, the level in this distribution reservoir and reservoir that line is known as a HD line that is <coughs> gradient line and in the summit portion or in valley portion blow off wall are placed and in the summit portion or a top portion gate walls are placed. Please look at this figure at the bottom there are blow off wall and at the top there are gate walls and this is the and AV is the air wall <coughs> ok that is here air walls are poor. So, you must know this figure to describe the pipe apprentices or the walls. First of all sluice wall or gate wall you know all of people this wall because the municipal water supply is based on that sluice wall or gate wall. These are also known as shut off walls or stop walls. They are extensively used in distribution system to shut off the supplies whenever desired. They are also helpful in dividing the water mains in suitable sections. The spacing of such a walls on the mains may be 150 meter to 300 meter. They possess the advantage over most of the other walls of combining relatively low cost and offering almost no resistance to the flow of water when the wall is wide open. The gate walls are commonly used in waterworks are made up of cast iron that is CI with brass mountings. They are either of solid waste type or double disc type. Figure shows double disc type. This figure shows the double disc type of sluice wall and the disc is slightly self adjusting so that they will wedge themselves between the <coughs> tapering seats. So, this is so simple you study that figure and working mechanism of that sluice wall. Then second is the air relief wall. Name itself indicates it is used to relieve the air. The water flowing through the pipe line always contains some air. This air tries to accumulate at the high points. So, as shown in the first figure we have to provide that air wall at the summit points not at the valley points and may interfere with the flow. Air relief walls are therefore provided at the summits along the water pipe to provide an exit to such accumulated air. Air walls are also required to discharge air when main is being filled and to admit air when it is being emptied. The admission of air on emptying the main is great importance on the large steel mains which may flatten if the pressure falls below the atmosphere. There are two types of air relief wall that is liver and float type of air relief wall and it consisting of cast iron chamber, float liver and poppet wall. When air starts accumulating in the chamber, float is lowered and poppet wall is opened and due to this air is released. This is going to down and the air is released from here and it goes outside or there is escape of air. So, you must study the mechanism of that air relief wall. Third is the reflux wall. Name itself indicates it is 
reflex or non return reflex walls are also known as a check walls or non return walls it is automatic device which allows the water to flow in one direction only because non return name itself indicates it is not allowed to return that water they are placed in the water pipes which obtain water directly from the pump when the pump is stopped the water in the pipeline does not rush back and <coughs> damage the pump this is the non return type of wall it is essentially consisting of the flat disc within the pipeline <coughs> as shown in that figure and pivoted so that it is forced open when flow of water is in one direction and forced to shut down or shut up against the sitting when the flow tries to reverse so the brass and plug plugs are used and when the flow is there it opens and when flow is back it closes so that is very important that mechanism is important then we are going to discuss the pressure relief wall nep itself indicates it is used to relieve relieve the pressure this is also termed as automatic cut off walls or safety walls they are located at such a points when pressure is likely to be maximum when the line pressure increases above the preset value the wall operates automatically and the pressure is reduced so it is used to reduce the pressure or relieve the pressure this figure shows the pressure reducing wall it contains the wall element upper cylinder isolating cork strainer <coughs> or fish needle cork indicator relay wall diaphragm etc so you please study that figure very carefully and sometimes question may be asked in examination to describe the pressure relief wall and draw a schematic diagram of pressure relief wall so you must know this nine important features of that pressure relief wall then altitude wall <coughs> altitude wall they are mainly used on those lines when the supply which supply the water to the elevated tanks or stand pipes they close automatically when tank is full and open when the pressure on the pump side is less than that of tank side of the wall figure shows the altitude wall this is the attitude wall this is the inlet and this is the outlet of that wall and arrangement is made in the wall in such a way that it has automatically opening mechanism when the tank is not full and when tank is full it closes automatically then score wall name itself indicates it is used to remove the score score or sludge material these walls are also known as a blow off walls or a wash out walls and they are ordinary sluice walls they are nothing but the sluice walls that located either at the dead ends the location is important score walls are located at the dead ends why they are located at dead ends because there is a score or there is a formation of the score or at the lowest point of the main because there is also a location to form a score they are provided to remove the sand and silt that is nothing but the score deposited in the pipeline they are operated manually that score wall so <coughs> this is enough for this part two lecture of conveyance of the water and <coughs> thank you for watching my channel up to end and once again subscribing you people to asking you people to subscribe my channel and <coughs> get your ideas cleared in civil engineering so this is enough till then bye bye